by popular vote tonight. I'm not doing an electronic stream, we're doing Zelda Breath of the Wild. However, uh, I, f uh, I filmed some interesting footage earlier on today as B-roll stuff that might be included in another video at some point that I thought you guys might find slightly interesting and I thought I'd share with you anyway. And that is to do with the amount of uh, standby power and ongoing power that these power bank control boards use. So this is kind of interesting because it tells you a little thing about how long power banks can hold power for and how some of them will just drain their battery with nothing connected to them, but some of them don't. So uh, let's go. I've got a uh, decent power bank controller board here, which I'm planning on using in an upcoming project. Um, and um, uh, the reason why I've selected this one, well, I've got, I bought a couple and uh, this is the one that I've picked out of the selection that I have. And the reason why I picked this one is I wanted um, I, I wanted to find the good one that had a very low quiescent current or a very good standby mode on it. Um, now notice at the moment the whole thing is in sh complete shut off. It's all connected, but it's in shut off, and there is zero current being drawn from the battery, or or it's below the it's below this current reading. So we're we're currently looking at milliamps here, and we're down in the mic. Oh, there you go. There was a one. So we're down in the microamps which is absolutely nothing. Now, if I, uh, if I turn it on, if we uh, try and get a read on the battery, so we get two lights because the battery is, this cell is pretty knackered. As you can see, we've got six milliamps to power, the, the, to power it all up. And then when that goes off, we drop back down to zero again. And likewise, if I plug in a load, only a small load. So now we're pulling 300 milliamps because there is a load on the supply and it's pulling power. And if we disconnect the load again, it drop backs to standby at six milliamps for the LEDs. And then after a moment, the LEDs will go out and the whole thing goes to sleep again. So it looks like we're just under one milliamp there somewhere. So at any rate, this means that this, this battery, this system can sit here for days, weeks and months and not lose any power at all. There's almost nothing draining that cell. Now, let's compare this to another power board that I've got. All right, here's another setup. Let's just turn on the multimeter. All right, so far so good. We've got nothing. Let's just press in the power on the bottom of the board so it just triggers the power meter on it. So the power meter being on is quite a lot. And right, the LEDs on the bottom have gone out. We haven't even attached a load and we're sitting at 60 milliamps. So obviously that's considerably high, that's an order of magnitude higher than the previous one. Let's just plug in a load. So there's our 300 milliamp-ish load. So that's that. Let's unplug it again. So we've dropped back to, well, uh, we've got some lights on the bottom. No, the lights have gone out. Oh yeah, there we go. And we've dropped down to 60 milliamps again. So let's just sit and wait and just see if that drops into standby again. Oh, and okay, that one has dropped off again. And as you can see, that's just dropped down to one-ish. I oh, know that's interesting. See, I thought this one was gonna stay on all the time. It stays on for a lot longer than the other one does. However, it does go to sleep after a short amount of time. And likewise, if I plug the load into that, that's just gonna wake up straight away. There we go, and it's woken up again. Okay, that's not so bad. That makes me a lot happier. I thought this one was gonna sit and chew through 60 milliamps just constantly and drain whatever battery was attached to it. That makes me happy because this one, as you can see, is a dual output one. I need to measure how much, what its maximum load is, but um, I'm not gonna do that on this cell because this cell's goosed. Uh, cool, all right, uh, let's try another one. All right, next option. Now this is a super cheapo one. It's come out of one of these uh, square rectangular box style power banks. So it's a double-sided board with the charge input on the bottom, output on the top. Um, so let's see what kind of uh, let's see what kind of current this thing has on it. Okay, we turn on, and we're reading zero to all intent and purpose, so that's fine. Let's stick a load on it. Okay, it's switched on. We have blue light, and we've got our load. Incidentally, we're reading low on our load. However, I've no idea what my electronic load is currently set to at the moment. My energy meter is in use somewhere else, so I can't see what this thing is actually drawing. The point is we've applied a load to the system and we can see that load, so that's fine. Okay, let's disconnect it. 
Well, that's not bad. Even while it's in standby, it was, uh, it was low, and then it drops off very quickly. That is fine. So in terms of um, in terms of idle standby current, they all did very well. This one is very aggressive with its quote unquote power saving. So that's that. So the next thing we wanted the next thing we want to know is at what point will these things cut off? So let's see if we can measure that. Okay, so we're back to the dual output board. And so now we're connected up to a bench power supply as the battery source. So we have an infinite variable battery input here. So again, we put the load on, we get the load out. So far, so good. Let's disconnect that again. So far, so good. So what we want to know now is with the load on, and I'm just going to wind the wick up on this a bit more since it can take it now. That's bouncing around a bit. There we go. Okay, it's flashing some of the LEDs on the bottom because it's getting a bit confused as to the load but that's fine. What I want to know is how low I can take the, the quote unquote battery voltage before this thing chops off and stops drawing anything from the battery. So we want this to, dro we want this to drop to zero uh, when I bring the battery down to about 2 point, you know, about 2.8, 2.9 volts. Um, if we can take the battery down to, you know, 2.8 or lower, and this does not drop to zero, that means this thing is over discharging the battery and could potentially damage the cell that we have connected to it. So let's start lowering the voltage. So we're at 4.2 at the moment, which is a top charged battery. So down we go, 3.9, so far so good, 3.8, 3.6, 3.7, Oh, and it's died. All right, that's lower than I expected. Yeah, just as just under 3.6. So more or less, when the battery dropped below 3.6, it cut off. So okay, fine. Let's see what the others do. That's a lot higher than I was expecting. So let's see what else we've got. See again, I'm not sure about my testing methodology because this is reading a 50% charge while the battery voltage is at 4.2. I'm not sure how these things read the battery charge level, uh, sorry, the cell charge level, but nah. Let's do a comparison and just see if this experiment actually goes anywhere or not. Right, there's the load. And we've got a lower overall draw than with the previous one. Again, I'm not sure what that means. It might be that the... Uh, the actual boost circuitry in this one is more efficient, um, so nah. This does seem to have a, uh, no, it's got the same control on it. This has less circuit on it, I believe. Has it got any controls on the bottom? Nope. This one runs just a single uh, chip rather than the two chips of this one. So there's significantly less support circuitry. Uh, fine, okay, let's start pulling the whip down. 4.1. 3.8 and it's flashing 3.7 and it's died still flashing the light there we go okay so it went into a it went into a warning position where the light was flashing and it switched off the load and then when we went lower than that then the LED died has it got anything if we press the LED? No. Yeah, oh yeah, no, it can still flash the LED at the moment while it's at 3.6. However, it's refusing to power up the load. So uh, again, about 3.6-ish, um, it's cut off the battery. Interesting. Okay, now this is the one that I'm expecting to let the battery run super low. Okay, there's our load. Uh, we're still on 3.6 volts. I'm just gonna, whoa, that was a bit high. I just cranked it up way too high. Did I just kill it? Yeah, I just killed that, right, hang on a sec. All right, there we go. So at 4.1 volts, that is flashing. Let's slowly bring it down. 3.9. Three point eight, three point seven. Okay, here we go. So now it's getting a little bit more interesting because we're down at three point five volts now, 
and uh, it's still flashing away, but it's still powering the load. As you can see, the, uh, the load to the battery has gone up significantly because the voltage is dropping. So we're pulling more from our virtual cell. So let's take that down a bit further. 3.3, it's still boosting. 3.2, 3.1, there we go, oh there we go, it just cut out. So 3.1, it's gone, it's gone to standby, you just saw a very brief one flash up there. So it's not drained the cell any further than that. So this one allowed the cell to go significantly lower than the other power banks did. Um, so, uh, so this one is pulling a lot more out of the cell. Um, although, to be honest, once your voltage starts dropping like that, the cell is more or less gone anyway. So, you know, there's no need to really burn the cell that low. Um, but it gives you an indication as to, you know, what, what is left. Um, so that's interesting then. Cool. Okay. Uh, there's one more that I want to do a test on, um, and that's in New Cell Square. So I'll go and get it. Okay, so same test as the first time round. We've got a, a lithium cell attached, and we're going to connect the um, we're going to connect the multimeter in line. See, this is the one that's got me worried. This one, I think, is the death one that kills cells because I've plugged it in, and straight away it's jumped up to sixty-five milliamps quiescent. So let's plug the load into it. Right, there's the load. So it's now active, and now let's disconnect the load. And now we'll just leave that to run and see how long it takes that to go to sleep mode or some kind of standby. So yeah, I'm gonna leave that. And I'm gonna turn off the work light because I think I might be here a while. All right, so this has definitely had like five or more minutes now. My um, uh, meter is actually starting to beep at me saying, hey, you're still using me, and we're still drawing 65 milliamps. So this thing will just sit and drain the battery. So let's do the next test then. So let's get it hooked up to the power meter. Okay, so we're now running from the bench power supply, and there's our familiar 65 milliamp uh, of quiescent current back again. So let's plug in the load. So there's our load, we've got a blue light on the side of it to indicate that it's active. Uh, so let's start turning down our quote unquote battery voltage again. So that's 3 3.8, 3.6, 3.4, 3.3, 3.2. Now notice at this point that the um, power draw has plummeted. <laughs> So it's not correctly providing power anymore. It's almost certainly not boosting, but it's still allowing power to be drawn. So that is what we're interested in here. So let's keep going, 3.1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, we're reading our quiescent current. It's still trying to power the load. The light has gone out, but it's still providing power. This is the bit that I've been worried about. So down we go, 2 2.9, 2.8, 2.7, 2.6, 2.5, 2.4, and we're knackering the cell now. So if we had a real battery connected to this, the cells would be getting knackered by over discharge. We're down to 2.2 volts, 2.1, 2. So we're at 2 volts, and I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's still a very faint red light on the, on the electronic load there. It's still trying to power it. So this is exactly why this thing is bad, and why I'm actually going to stop using this one because um, it's trying to power until it kills the cell. Now, I've had this hooked up to a digital clock in my shop, um, and I was a bit worried because it was over-discharging cells, and we've just proven exactly what's going on there. So there we go. So what we've learned then is that the other three power bank controllers I've got here, these were all pretty good. 
um, they all have they all have an idle shutdown mode where when there's no load attached to them they'll switch off completely so they don't discharge the battery while there's no load connected and all of them cut power to the back from the battery when the voltage dropped too low as soon as the cell dropped to what they defined as a flat cell they all switched off completely uh, with varying degrees of gracefulness um, however this one the reason why I ran this test because I was um, this is the one that I've been using and I was concerned about it uh, this one was um, it did not have any kind of uh, idle uh, or sleep mode on it um, so it would constantly draw its quiescent current all the time and uh, even when the battery cell dropped down to as low as 2 volts it was still passing cell voltage through to the output. It wasn't boosting but it was still passing the voltage through so it was over discharging the cell. So if you had a cell connected to it that had no protection on it that cell is going to get munched. And right now all of my experiments here are running off of um, uh, scavenged laptop battery cells. So these cells don't have any protection on them because they're supposed to be part of a laptop battery pack that has its own protection circuit. So there we go. I hope that was kind of interesting and I'll see you all next time.